What is up, guys? This is Gary Gilgan with the Daily Crypto. Another great day in the market. As you can see, the top 10 crypto still moving up. Bitcoin at 4.5% gains in the past 24 hours, up to $4,293. It's almost $4,300 per Bitcoin. Man, I was just looking through uh, some old uh, pictures that I have in my phone and just on at the end of December of last year, Bitcoin was sitting at $800. And now it is at $4,300, which just goes to show that things can happen in the blink of an eye. I remember I got into Ethereum at $7.50, it's now at $302. Ripple down two and a quarter percent. Bitcoin Cash still holding at 300. IOTA up seven and a half percent, almost a dollar. It is just teasing at that dollar mark. My, my favorite coin of all right now, NEO up 15, almost 16% in the past 24 hours at $48, really testing that $50 support line. Litecoin up three and a quarter percent. NEM up four and a half percent at 25 cents, almost 26 cents. Dash up. 15% at $231 and rounding out the top 10 crypto is Ethereum Classic up 4.5% at 14 and a quarter dollars. It just keeps on climbing, guys. And I'm here to tell you, you see all over the internet, crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, it's all in a bubble. It's all in a bubble. What you're just, it's not a bubble. What you're witnessing is what's called a transfer of wealth. These, these technologies, these cryptocurrencies are simply a new form of currency, a new form of money. And the old money, the fiat currency, the dollars in your pocket, that is the old technology. And throughout history, when a new, more evolved money system comes out, the old money goes rushing into it. So that's all we're seeing. It's going to continue to happen. We're just in phase two of my three phase, my theory of the three phases of all technology. First phase is early adoption. Second phase is mass information. Third phase is mass adoption. We just started the second phase this year. And as you can see, we're having exponential growth in this technology because the information is being spread to the masses. Now you see information about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency on CNBC, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Wall Street Journal, Business Insider. The information is everywhere. So people are starting to get curious and the smart money is starting to get in. You see all these institutional investors, billionaires, hedge fund managers, they're all starting to look at cryptocurrency. They're all, they're all starting to get curious because they know that the current stock market, it can't sustain because it's backed by those dollars. I'm here to tell you, once we get into phase three, you're going to go into the grocery store, you're going to look at car prices, you're going to look at house prices, and they will be valued in crypto. A house will cost you 10 Bitcoin when the Bitcoins are $10,000 a piece. Okay, it's all relative. It's going to be a massive influx of smart money, which is going to drive the price up astronomically. And then once we get into mass adoption, then it will have leveled out. So the people who get in at the very end, their lives really won't change very much because they got in when everybody got in and all the money had already been scooped up. Top news stories today. Number one, I've been seeing uh, around the internet 
as of the past couple of days as Bitcoin's total market cap has surpassed PayPal. And now we can see PayPal X COO is stating that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are fulfilling their original vision. The original vision of PayPal was a decentralized form of money transfer. Unfortunately, the technology, the infrastructure wasn't around. And so they weren't able to fulfill on that vision. If you know anything about PayPal is Elon Musk was actually one of the founding members of PayPal. So you know that guy is always ahead of his time. So obviously PayPal being a vision of his was that of decentralization. Former PayPal COO David Sachs has said cryptocurrency is fulfilling PayPal's original vision to create the new world currency. In an interview with CNBC, Sachs, who worked with the payment network in its early days around the year 2000, said there were strong comparisons between the current blockchain scene and the dot-com boom of the 1990s. For those of us who have lived through the dot-com era, this feels reminiscent. You have some of the same speculative excess and random enrichment, he told the publication. You can also feel that something revolutionary is happening. Money is being made programmable. That is a fundamental change with implications we can barely see. So right now, the majority of people they're still highly skeptical and cynical of cryptocurrency because they don't understand how it works. You know, and I, I heard the great analogy is that people don't understand how a jet engine works, yet they will risk their life to get on an airplane, trusting that the engineers who engineered and built the jet engine knew what they were doing. So right now in the mass information, the majority of people still don't have the trust because they don't understand how it works. But just because you don't understand how something works does not mean that it is not revolutionary and that it is not going to change the world. It is happening. PayPal hit the news regarding cryptocurrency for less favorable reasons this week as Bitcoin overtook the company's $70 billion market cap for the first time in history. So last November, I made a video where I, um, I speculated that one Bitcoin was going to surpass or was going to hit $3,000 per Bitcoin before gold hit $3,000 per ounce. And within six months, that prediction became a reality. So now, only a few months after that prediction, we have got Bitcoin's total market cap is in excess of $70 billion, surpassing PayPal. That's awesome. During its early years, however, Sachs says the plan along, all along was to freeze out the banking sector from payments. So they were trying to take over the banking sector. Unfortunately, I've worked with PayPal a lot since the late 1990s and uh, their fees, their merchanting fees are really no better than a bank. Whereas cryptocurrency, much, much less than PayPal. And no chargebacks. PayPal is a bugger. We added features like interest and debit cards so you never have to withdraw funds to the legacy banking system. When we got acquired by eBay, eBay that project kind of stopped, he explained. But cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are now fulfilling that original vision. They're doing it in a decentralized way without a decentralized database called the blockchain, whereas PayPal tried to do it all in a centralized way. You had to go through the banks. Okay. In Neo, still in the news. This is an exciting news story. Partnership between AdX and Neo catapults ADX exchange rate. AdX, an international decentralized advertising network that is developing a blockchain-powered infrastructure for online ad market, has announced it has partnered with NEO 
a China-based open source blockchain earlier at X plan to use Ethereum blockchain. However, it has seemingly opted otherwise after studying what NEO has to offer. That is awesome news. This is going to start happening more and more because of the limitations of the Ethereum blockchain. I don't know if you know this or not, but with Ethereum, in order for you to build a, a decentralized uh, application or a dApp on that network, you have to understand their coding language. Okay, the coders or the writers at Ethereum created their own coding language, and that coding language is the only coding language that you can use on the Ethereum network to create your dApps. Whereas with NEO, NEO is compatible with a multitude of different and more popular coding languages. So you're gonna see even more people who have already built their project on the Ethereum blockchain moving over to NEO and new programs choosing NEO over Ethereum for this same reason. ADEX, the platform's native token issued over the course of the campaign, has peaked several times so far and is currently trading at the price of 80 cents, which is the coin's all-time high. Its exchange rate skyrocketed immediately after the partnership was announced. So, good thing to keep your eye on if you're a trader or an investor. Any of these new ICOs or projects that are going to start launching on the NEO network, keep an eye out. A lot of money to be made. NEO was initially founded in 2014 under the name of Ant Shares. After the rebranding earlier this month, it has become the country's biggest blockchain infrastructure. No secret there. The project claims that its main goal is to promote the emergence of what it calls a smart economy. ADX has recently released their core smart contracts on Ethereum that would underlie its advertising network, ADX Core. We see the huge potential of NEO, and this is why we are aiming to become NEO's first DAP. Ivo Georgiev, uh, CEO and founder of ADX, commented We are excited about porting the ADEX core as we are convinced this will increase the efficiency of our advertising network. ADEX is now engaged in developing a prototype of their service, even though the project's roadmap suggested that it would be released as early as next February, the team expects to finish in a few months earlier. Tony Dow, the Secretary of General of NEO Council added, we are looking forward to ADEX moving its core to the NEO ecosystem. We are positive that dApps will help us push the smart economy further. And ADEX is an excellent trailblazer for this. ADEX seeks to tackle issues found in contemporary online advertising, which includes ad fraud, privacy problems, and the issue of informed consent. The news on the newly announced partnership came in the wake of a successful token creation event held by ADEX, which raised 40,000 Ethernet tokens. So very excited. You're gonna to continue to see these new projects like ADEX using the NEO platform. And finally, Ripple's in the news. <laughs> Even though Ripple's down right now, about 15 cents, Ripple confirms China expansion plans shoots down the Alibaba rumor. Ripple is opening up about its plans to enter one of the world's largest markets. In new statements to Coindesk, the San Francisco blockchain startup aimed to address rumors that first appeared last Thursday on XRP chat a forum dedicated to gossip and commentary on both the company and its technology. In short, yes, the blockchain company is planning to set up operations in China, but no, it's not doing so with the help of one of the region's e-commerce giants. Emi Yoshikawa, 
Ripple's director of joint venture partnership told Coindesk, China is a key market for a global payments network, which is why we're looking to build a presence there. Total cross-border business-to-business payment value involving China is a five trillion annual market. And the large Chinese e-commerce market currently lacks a highly efficient and low cost solution. Most recently, Ripple added 10 new financial institutions to, a block ch- to its blockchain network, including MUFG in Japan, BBVA in Spain, and SEB in Sweden. But membership by Chinese firms has so far been absent. And it appears it will have to keep working on adding a big name from China that will be impressive, that will impressive li- to that impressive list of collaborators. Ripple also put to rest speculation that Alibaba was already running a validator node on the Ripple network. Images in the past showed a node that appeared to be operating in Wangzhou, China with an address linking it to Alibaba Advertising Company. This led to some belief, that this led some to believe the Chinese mammoth would be, would help Ripple maneuver its way into the country, though a Ripple spokesperson said much, said such an effort is not in the works. Alibaba, the company, is not running a validator. So that will be. Uh, China is uh, always in, it's, it's, a, it's a constant battle between the U.S. and China for the largest economy. China, a lot of big things coming up, but also a lot of uh, underlying issues in China with their debt bubble, their real estate debt bubble, very big. I don't know if you've ever seen this in China, but there are ghost cities just huge cities full of skyscrapers with not a single person living in them, just all over the country, very big. So they've got their fair share of problems too. But uh, if Ripple gets into the country and partners up with one of the big financial institutions in China, China is a country of uh, unity. People really work together in China Um, I think that's one of the byproducts of communism, at least, is people working together in community more. But as China comes into more of a westernized political uh, standing, they still have the underlying value of family and community. So just like we're seeing with NEO, the Chinese people are always open and willing to investing into their country's own, what the country itself supports. And so if Ripple can get a partnership with some of these Chinese uh, financial institutions, the people are really going to flood into Ripple. So good stuff, uh, good stuff on the horizon. I think that the, uh, the top 10 are gonna continue to rise in market cap and in volume. I think there's gonna continue over the next 90 days a continue for the battle of the top three positions. I personally am betting on Neo stepping into the number two, excuse, uh, the number two position over the next 90 days. I think that uh, Neo is going to overtake Ethereum. I think a lot of people are actually gonna get out of Ethereum once we start seeing more and more information, more development uh, with the Neo network. I think you're gonna see there's a huge, huge influx into NEO. But don't take my word for it. See you on the next video. Remember, get in to crypto. See you later.